Gatorade acquires Logan Paul and KSI's prime hydration for $10 billion. Now, that's a fake but very realistic headline that we could see in the near future. And in this video, we're going to tell you why. Before we get started, there is one thing we wanted to talk about, and, and that is that we are tired of what the NHL has been doing. <laughs> No longer will we just sit here and have less subscribers than the National Hockey League. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and help us pass the NHL in subscribers. I mean, it's over, guys. It's over. We also went out and bought every flavor of Prime, and we're going to try them on this episode. But we all know that orange is going to be the best because it's objectively the best. I don't know if that's true. I'd put lemon lime at the top. Then Lemon I would, lime? It's a classic. It's the original. So buzz off. First and foremost, when KSI and Logan put out that they had an announcement to make, I was like, third fight, take my money. I'm ready to watch. Let's watch it. Not the case. They launched this Prime Hydration sports drink. A hydration drink Prime called Prime Hydration. We are going to rival the biggest brands in the world. How did this even come about? Because this really came out of left field for all of us. August 25th of 2018, they boxed for the first time in Manchester Arena, and they do it pay-per-view on YouTube. They end up selling 1.3 million purchases on YouTube pay-per-view, the most bought non-professional boxing match of all time. I was one of those purchases. So was I. It was incredibly enjoyable. I loved all the lead up from when KSI calls out Logan. Logan Paul, and there's a pause, I don't care, bring it. To the diss tracks, to the videos back and forth, to the press conferences. Shut this, the f up. This is coming from Shut the f up. But that fight ended in a draw. So obviously they had to fight again. And this time they fight in the Staples Center here in Los Angeles in 2019. We actually attend the fight and mm -hmm. it's insane. Justin Bieber is there. Tons of celebrities are there. It's super entertaining. Oh, big uppercut! Big uppercut for Logan Paul! KSI stumbling and bumbling. It, it felt like this moment where they had crossed over from a creator storyline to a mainstream entertainment storyline. KSI ends up winning this second match. But it doesn't really matter because what it showed is that together, they were able to come together, disrupt an industry in a very short amount of time. They basically learned how to work together, coordinate, and sell. How to watch the fight. Very simple. You buy your tickets at AXS.com, link in the description. The fight is this week, this Saturday. I am going to tell you right now, depending on which country you're in, how to watch the fight. And the interesting thing is, although they're enemies in the boxing ring, they both needed each other for this big moment to happen. Y'all hated each other. Yeah, like we yeah, hated yeah, each yeah, other, yeah, dude. Yeah. Or at least had to convince ourselves that we, we hated each other, yeah, right? It's yeah. hard to get in a boxing ring and fight someone that you like. I think one other thing about these two specifically and why they're so dynamic together is because they cover two different markets, not only the UK and the US, but KSI comes from a gaming background, which is a massive community online. Logan's more of like lifestyle, Los Angeles, mainstream culture. And so when they come together, they span across a massive market. And I think that's why you've seen as they've started to collaborate when KSI was on Impulsive. Massive audience, right? 10 million plus views. We got the UK's biggest star sitting across from me. KSI. Uh, on the US, biggest star. When Logan was on KSI's live show or when Logan was in the Sidemen episodes, like massive audiences. So even though it seems like they're getting a little bit friendlier, I was still convinced there was going to be a third fight, especially when they teased this big announcement on Instagram. They went on live. There we go. This is it. <laughs> and faked everyone out by announcing an NFT project. NFT, baby! NFT project! And I was so disappointed. I was like, oh, that is so not what I wanted this to be. And then they said they were joking and launched the energy drink. We've come together, JJ. It's a f honor. No longer oh, rivals. No longer. <laughs> Brothers, yeah. business partners, it. that's it. We love y'all. Already within a week, their Instagram account has over 600,000 followers. That's just about half as many as Gatorade and five times as many as Powerade. And that's all within a week. They also, according to Logan, sold over 3 million bottles before they even launched to some major retailers. Walmart, Kroger, Target, CVS, nuts, GNC, nuts. Vitamin Shop, 3 million bottles off the rip. Should we try a flavor? Sure. Should I start with orange? If that's how you want to live your life, then sure. Okay, I'm going to start with orange. Here we go. First sip of, what are you trying? Lemon lime. Prime time. Prime I guess time! So. I guess so. <laughs> wow. That's pretty good. It's sweeter than I anticipated, but I like the orange flavor. I like that it has a coconut water base and like it feels kind of blank. Are you... Are you chugging it? Is it good? 
Tastes great. Tastes great. Well done. So clearly a very impressive launch. Over 540,000 people are watching live. They've pre-sold 3 million units. Not everyone was impressed. We made a post about this on Twitter, and there was a decent amount of backlash in the Mm -hmm. comments. Mm -hmm. Darren said, bad advertising. They look like Teletubbies. I mean, he's not wrong. These are Teletubby colors, but I guess a lot of things are Teletubby colors. I think that's a good opportunity for a meme that Prime should probably jump on. Sure. All attention is good attention for them right now. Wagamus said, not feeling the brand and what distinguishes it yet. Another person said, the big companies will either buy it if it is worth it, but I don't think so, or just destroy you guys. We'll see after three months. I think it's easy to to poke holes in an announcement like this. From an audience perspective, you can feel like what makes them capable of launching this type of company? Do they know anything about this industry? Holy sh- we we started a, a beverage company. And the idea that us, <laughs> us YouTubers. <laughs> I feel like that's typical feedback about creators launching businesses. Yeah. Of people being like, what gives you the right mm-hmm. to launch this business or the expertise to launch the business? And to be honest, the thing that gives any creator the right to launch a business is their community and their audience. People really f- know you yes. as as they do most digital cr- content creators a-list celebrities you don't really know who they are you just see mm. their work it's like they have access to people who will be interested in what they're doing and most likely they're finding experts to help them like that is the reality manufacturers <laughs> are f-ing wizards yes we have very 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 good team also this model is not new for creators and entertainers we've seen a lot of creators launch specifically beverages, whether it's any energy from the Sway Boys, the Try Guys have a tea, Nelk Boys have their Happy Dad seltzer, Emma Chamberlain has her coffee, the Ace Family has Silly Juice. But one of the biggest reasons that creators and celebrities are launching drink companies is because there is the opportunity for life-changing wealth through an acquisition. I mean, we saw with George Clooney and his Casamigos tequila brand, he made upwards of a billion dollars in that acquisition. At one point, he invited 14 of his friends to a vacation and then all of a sudden just gave them a million dollars each. And Logan was very clear that that's what he's heading for. This could be my uh, 50 cent vitamin water. 50 cent made upwards of $100 million when vitamin water was sold to Coca-Cola. One of the most interesting things about this launch is how clearly they have identified a collective enemy in Gatorade. Gatorade. Gatorade's been around for 15 years. It's 120 calories. It's it's so high in sugar. It's fucking garbage. Yeah, man. And since then, they have said Gatorade so many times. That is their enemy. Gatorade. 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 They're running the same play as their boxing matches. Like what they did in boxing was they signaled to their community who their collective enemy was. For Logan, that was KSI. For KSI, that was Logan. They built a storyline through the back and forth, through this adversary that they had. And it all culminated in this one big event where you could purchase, right? And Mm -hmm. so what we're watching right now is two enemies came together Now they're partners and they have a collective enemy, which is Gatorade. And we're watching it unfold across Twitter, across Instagram. The community is making content, talking to Gatorade. And yet the goal is that they will be rivals until they become business partners, exactly like what happened with KSI and Logan. It's following the exact same trajectory. When I first saw them calling out Gatorade, I thought it was a clever marketing tactic, but I didn't necessarily think it was a reality. Why? Would we not overtake Gatorade eventually? But the more I looked into it, the more I actually do think it is realistic. Let's look at the story of a company called Body Armor. Ever heard of it? Body Armor starts as a sports drink in 2011. It's a very similar drink, actually, to Prime Hydration. It's got a small percentage of it that's made with coconut water. Interesting. Then, 2013, they take on investment from Kobe Bryant. They end up building out their roster of athletes. They've got James Harden, uh, MLB player Mike Trout. In 2018, Coca-Cola buys a small minority stake in the company. At this point in 2018, they're doing $250 million in sales a year. And in 2019, they have 10% of this sports drink market. Just last year, Coca-Cola acquires Body Armor at a valuation of $8 billion. And I've never even heard of them. That's crazy. And their bottle looks awful. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, listen, I'm with you. I think that's crazy that we've never heard of this company, Body Armor, and they're worth $8 billion. That, for me, was also the tipping point of like, oh, okay, the headline we came up with, not that unrealistic. Maybe not that far off, considering they've already, in pre-launch, sold 3 million bottles. So after Body Armor, I really started to believe that this was a possibility 
for Prime. I mean, how much of the market do they really need to capture? They're not fully competitive with Gatorade. They're complementary. Gatorade is marketed as a sports drink for athletes for ultimate performance. Prime is actually a lifestyle drink. When I was training for um, the Floyd fight, I was approached by a lot of uh, beverage companies. And um, I realized a lot of them kind of marketed to athletes and there wasn't one that that fit and could fuel any lifestyle. This is meant for people who can drink it throughout the day, mm. not necessarily just when they're working out. I wanted something that tasted good. And, you know, it was something you could just drink every day and it was all right. Mm. And I didn't feel like shit after it. And that's actually what Gatorade and Powerade are looking to go into right now. PepsiCo and Gatorade launched Bolt 24 and Coca-Cola and Powerade have something called Power Water aimed at this person who is supposed to be consuming throughout the entire day, not just during athletics. So when you think about it, Prime actually just has to kind of compete with that segment of mm -hmm. Gatorade because mm -hmm. both of them can exist on the shelves. There's some marketing imagery that Prime has come out with, with video game controllers and headsets, which is also a part of the market that Gatorade probably doesn't touch, like gaming, mm -hmm. and that's KSI's origins. That's his, his fan base is a lot of gamers. And Gatorade probably can't really break in. Maybe they could into gaming, but harder. And when they went live on e-commerce, they sold out instantly. It was like within an hour or two that Logan posted that it was sold out. They have this element of digital distribution that none of these companies really have, but they would probably love to have. I mean, they double their reach immediately when they decide to partner. The aggregate social reach of KSI and Logan next to Gatorade and Powerade combined, mm -hmm. it's no contest. Yeah. They have ability to drive traffic and that matters. And if Prime Hydration like has an account that's just massive, Gatorade's Bolt 24, they just be like, let's just make it Prime. We already have a massive following over here. Let's just take that formula and let's launch it through Prime. The likelihood, if you're at Gatorade and you're watching all of this, like I think there is a really high likelihood that they wanna buy it, you know, to say, this is great. These are two of the biggest influencers. We bring them into our family. They can probably promote some of our other drinks as well. And we get access to their drink, which has a built-in fan base of young people who might not be interested in Gatorade. I think it's obvious that Logan's team had looked at data and trends to make the decision to actually move forward in the hydration category. I saw a, a niche in the market that kind of wasn't getting hit um, involving hydration beverages. Data and trends are so important for entrepreneurs of any types, but if you're trying to be a creator, it's also really important for you, which is why I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's episode, vidIQ. vidIQ is an amazing tool for creators that aims to empower creators through data. Now, let me show you what it looks like to log into our vidIQ. We have all this data about our channel that helps inform us about our past performance, how we stack up against our competitors like the NHL, and helps us make decisions about future episodes. You can click on keywords and search by the topic that you want to make a video on. You can also click on one of those ideas and it'll show you what other videos have been made with that same topic. Not only do they give us data and trends, every day vidIQ will give you 50 brand new video ideas that are best suited for your channel. You can actually go through the video ideas and say which ones you like and don't like. This is also available in the vidIQ mobile app so you can just swipe through the ideas. The free version of vidIQ gives you three ideas a day. Pro version gives you 10 ideas, but we use the boost plan at Colin and Samir, which gives us 50 brand new video ideas a day. So click the link in our description and you'll get 50% off a pro or boost plan for two months. You can also download the vidIQ extension, which will go straight into your browser and give you insights to optimize your videos. Over the last year, we've experienced exponential growth on this channel. And a lot of that is because we've studied more of our data and that's helped us make better decisions on what to make. vidIQ is trusted by millions of creators like us. So click the link and get started on vidIQ today. Let's also talk about the UK. Let's talk about the UK. Because KSI, his fan base is UK specific. And again, putting these two guys together gives you access to two continents. And that's a big deal. It's worth noting that Prime is going to start shipping first in the US. And then in February of 2022, they'll be in UK retail. And they specifically call out UK retail. Mm. The interesting thing there is that Gatorade actually historically, from what I understand, has struggled in retail in the UK. And if you're from the UK and you're watching this, let us know if that's the truth. But from what we saw, they're really not in retail. And if you look on Twitter, Gatorade even just tells people to order off Amazon if you're in the UK. What's the UK's Gatorade? What's Lucasade. Lucasade? Supposedly. Is that good? I, I, I drink that and be like, this tastes like 
shit. shit. Man. But that's a competitor that's taking market share away from Gatorade in the UK. So Gatorade is having trouble over there. Who better to push product than KSI who dominates in the UK? So if you're Gatorade, why not eventually just acquire Prime and also acquire the UK market? And get access to KSI. Yeah. Like pay enough money to KSI where you actually get access to him to promote other drinks too. So rivals end up turning into business partners. Believe it or not, KSI and I have a lot more in common than we have uh, differences. I wish that was our story. Like, I wish we knew we were going to be business partners. And then we backtracked and we're like, all right, let's just spend two years making fun of each other. Mm. Talking a lot of shit. Mm. And then make this grand announcement. We're starting a podcast. That's good. You know? Well, maybe we do that with the NHL. There's a lot of excitement with an announcement. There's a lot of excitement upon launch. Like, you know, even for us, we were excited to go out and uh, find it in a store and, and, and try it out. The question is now, can you turn us into repeat buyers? Can you keep our attention? Is it sustainable for them to tell more and more stories yeah. that keep our attention? It's easy for this to feel like entrepreneurship as sport, mm. right? Where yeah. it's just an announcement for announcement's sake, because you have to have something new. You have to have something different. But that environment of just everyone launching a brand every two seconds makes me question the longevity of some of these brands. So I think what they can do is start signing other creators, like sponsoring other creators. So then they can scale the approach, still get the YouTube audience, but keep keep the narrative going through other creators. I think they have to do that. I think if you're a creator starting a creator business and you're not thinking about integrating with creators, the landscape that you know best and that has already put you ahead of other industries, then you're making a mistake. The thing that I think is really important to note is that Logan's first upload in like six months was about the launch of Prime and it went to number one on trending. The interesting thing about all of this is that launching businesses give creators something to make content about and something that's transformative, where you can track the progress of like, okay, they started Prime. I watched the launch video. Mm -hmm. The next one is about them launching in retail in the UK. The next one's about them delivering to subscribers' houses. The next one's about the first Prime event that they do, right? If this is his big swing, which he's kind of said that it is, I would recommend focusing a lot of his content on this, mm -hmm. making sure that we are invested in terms of who the characters are, what the challenges are for the next year, two years. I think it's the same way you sell a fight. Like you have to keep, yeah. keep content. I think they should make a diss track against Gatorade or something. Like they should just keep that narrative going yeah. and just keep hitting it with content. Because if he goes back to NFTs and Pokemon cards, I think the narrative can get a little bit muddled. I think he mm. should think strategically if he is going to make content like that again, how to sort of weave it into the prime narrative. Yeah. Uh, this story is crazy and it sucks and I'm out three and a half million dollars. So make sure to go get some prime because every dollar goes right back into my pocket. <laughs> the thing that's really interesting, I think we'll lay the foundation for future creator businesses is this is a creator collective. This is two creators coming together to launch one product. You have to imagine too that maybe the sidemen have a little bit of equity in this. Totally. Maybe Jake has a little bit of equity in this. Maybe Mike Malak and George Janko have a little bit of equity in this, right? And so it's something we've talked about for a while. We've seen it in creator houses, but historically those have just fallen apart. Yeah. This model of creators coming together to focus on one product is so powerful. I really believe this is a big swing for them that could work out and mm -hmm. it could work out in life-changing generational wealth. That headline that we put together, I think it's likely we see that. If it's happening for body armor, Come on. Come on. It can happen for Prime. So let us know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you also tired of the NHL? Put that in the comments. Check out vidIQ. The link is in the description. And subscribe to the channel because we need to pass the NHL. Penguins? What? Get out of here. In what world am I intimidated by a penguin? I can't even fly. <laughs>